Welcome to Valence Developer Diaries number 25. We are going to cover today um, one new feature that was released in Valence 6.1 for grids, which is nesting of columns. And um, also, also for, all right, sorry. We're having these audio problems today. I'm going to start over again. <laughs> We're going to go over nesting of columns that was introduced in 6.1 and some formatting. Um, this formatting stuff isn't new, but there are some uh, areas that we've had people ask about. Um, and it's kind of, uh, I think we sh it's just good to go over. It's something that's come up on the forums a couple of times. And then also in the second part of this, we're going to go over um, customizations of your tool tips and charts. Um, <clears throat> so let's start with first the grid and Sean's going to kick that off. I'm just going to kind of drive. Okay. Yeah. We finally got these audit. Can you hear me, Johnny? Yeah, I can hear you just fine. Okay, good. Okay. So, so as, as uh, Johnny mentioned, we're going to show um, um, nested columns and kind of review some of the built-in formatters just because we've had some questions on those. Um, but maybe first we'll start with the, uh, the nested columns and nested columns, like in this case, as, as you could see, we're using our, our favorite demo C mass file. Um, a good example of a nested or a good use case for a nested column here would probably be the address. Um, like typically, as you see how he has the grid now, we have address, city, state, zip, and country all as separate columns. Um, you know, you might want to have one main column just called address, and then that has all of the columns beneath it. So you see there's a, uh, a button down there, a little plus sign container. Um, you know, we kind of gave it a, a technical term because it really is, it's, you know, in, 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 in this world that speak, it's, it's, it's a container that holds items. Um, so we're going to add a container. So this is really a column container. And just like anything else, you're going to give that column a label. And then you can select the columns that um, you want to include under that label. And we'll show you there's another way to do it. Maybe, maybe initially, Johnny, we'll just include, you know, a couple of them and not add country or something. So you can show them how to add that not in this screen. Yeah. So now you see you have a new column and there are four columns beneath it. Um, if we look at the, conf maybe if we, yeah, you can see on the bottom there how the, uh, how the columns work and you have that main address column and then beneath it, you have the four columns that you selected. So if we wanted to add country in there as well, um, we could just take country and drag it go. So now we have five columns under the address column. So that is really all there is to it. Um, you know, it, it's something that, you know, we've been wanting to put in for a while because there are a lot of use cases for it. Um, it, it saves you some, uh, you know, it could save you some overly verbose column headings. Yeah, and I think it'd be good to point out too is that <clears throat> once the columns are in the container, um, it's a forced specific width. Like as soon as we added those columns, we defaulted to I think 150 or something like that. But that's the reason, like everyone's used to the flex or width. But once it's in a container, you have to you have to set the width to how how large you want it. And yeah, no. Notice you don't set the width on the actual main container itself. The, the width is just derived from the sum of its parts beneath it. Yep. Right. All right. So maybe now we can go into um, some of those, those the, the built-in formatters. So, so Sean or Johnny? Hey, Bob. So, so how, does, how does this now double header uh, behave, let's say, in the download, like if you're sending that to Excel? 
Excel, I, we don't have a double header. It's just going to come down just as they add the columns in the order they are. Okay, so no indication of address of, nope. of the of the upper address. Yeah, I don't know. I think Excel, we don't have that. Um, I guess I could just try, but I, I believe PDF we're able to do it, but I don't think Excel. But I could be wrong. I'll just try it and see what happens. Yeah, there's no indication of that anymore in Excel. Okay. okay. Um, but I do believe I could be wrong, but it might not even be in PDF. I don't remember. Okay, PDF we do have it. Okay. So, because a use that that we were looking forward to on this is like, uh, you know, sales versus costs versus something for January, sales versus costs versus something for February, and we were going to put the, we we're considering putting the the spanning container for for the months or something. Mm -hmm. um, but if, if we can't download it, that may not be useful. Okay. Yeah, I have to think about that, but but it looks great. Good. All right. Yeah. Any other questions on on this? And if you you know if if you could put anything in the chat too, we'll, we'll look at that. All right. Well, let's 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 continue on then with the um, the formatting. Now, some of this formatting will be kind of a review. You know, many of you probably already know this stuff. Um, but I think there's just some options in there that maybe people or even we can forget sometimes that are in there. <laughs> right. So, um, all right. So if we go to, let's like, we've got the date there, the last activity date. If we look at the formatting on that, and then maybe just a really quick review on the, uh, so obviously we have all the built-in formatters on the left, the date type formatters, um, the number, the money, the time, miscellaneous formatters. Um, and I think what we wanted to uh, show here was if you, if once, once you have a formatter, notice on the top right, you get that little gear. So if you click that, and I think that's kind of, you know, it gets hidden. Yeah. Um, you, can, you can change your comma separator for numbers. Um, you know, I know in some countries, you know, like, like we use a comma, some countries use a period, and then the separator would be a comma. And then uh, you can hide zero values. So that's so if you have a value that's zero, it'll just be blank. And then the date separator. So all of our formatters there use a dash, um, but we can, you can change it to whatever you want. So in this case, if we give it that forward slash, now we'll see all the way on the right that the date will have its forward slash value. Um, another one that kind of gets hit in there too, it might be worth showing would be um, if we go maybe to the name column. Yeah, and, um, and click the wrap cell, wrap cell, yep. And we might need to adjust our column to uh, be small you know, like just so, so we can force it to, to wrap. There we go. So notice how it's wrapping on to a, you know, it's wrapping to a new line. If you didn't have that checked, you would just see an ellipsis, like a dot, 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 like, it, like the, the, the contents can't show. So like maybe if we take that off now. So obviously, you know, most times, there you go. Um, but, you know, if you have a column of notes or something, you know, like, something that has a, a large value, it's something you typically probably want to check on there. And maybe just one more time, Johnny, back into any of them. I just want to see if there's anything else we're touching on. Um, yeah, the additional options, you know, font size, like, I don't know, it, things can start to get a little crazy looking if you've got different font sizes going in different uh, cells. But, you know, I have seen some sometimes like, uh, you know, just bolding a column or something is, um, you know, usually like the key field or the, the most important column to bold it or something. But 
Um, that's really it. I think the, uh, the before and after um, additional options, like uh, we've used that before probably with like a percentage, like if I've got a number that represents a percentage, I might put after the percentage sign. Um, but that's really it. But really, we wanted to, to show that that little gear icon in the formatting pops up because it's easy to it's easy to miss. All right. All right. <clears throat> okay. Is there any uh, anybody have any questions? You could jump on in or hit the chat. Otherwise, we'll move on to the chart tool tips. Once, twice. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> with the charts, you can you can have your own, you know, you can set a tool tip. So I'm just going to create a chart real quick off this data source. Just get my data field label. Okay, so right now, it's a brand new chart. I'm hovering over it. We don't see a tool tip. If we go to UI, we have all these configurations. And I think at one point in one of our developer diaries, we did go over this, um, the, the data access, which is you know formatting here, label access formatting here. Um, I'm gonna go to tool tip. And if I say I want a tool tip, if I just click that, I'm automatically gonna get the out of the box tool tip. Right, so it's got my state there, my my value, you know my my label field, and then the value. However, if you want to customize that tooltip, like I know that we had a blog post about like doing customizations on tooltips uh, for your grids and stuff like that. Well, the charts are a little different because they don't take. Like if we go into this customization, so let me just start over here. So the tooltip, yeah, you can just do the regular font or you can use our inline formatters, just like we just talked about in the grid. Um, but you can do your own custom, which you've probably seen before in the grid too. Um, however, the chart runs is in something that's called Canvas. So it doesn't allow for like HTML markup. Like I know in our blog post for the grid, we said, you know, uh, you're doing line breaks, or, you know, you're, you're breaking and you're showing multiple uh, items in your tooltip. But here I can't, I can't return HTML markup. It would just show it as the text of whatever that is. So if I just did like turn uh, test, It just renders, it just says text because it's in something that's called Canvas. It doesn't really take HTML. Um, <clears throat> so we do have something that I'm going to switch over here real quick. And it's in our guide. So I want to bring that up too. So the valence guides, and I'm going to go to App Builder, Widgets, Charts. Let me just do the column chart. I'm going to scroll down a bit and I'll find it somewhere. Here it is. Okay. So <clears throat> Custom formatting. Um, you can return an, what we call an object. You know, it's a, in JavaScript, it's an object, and the object can have any of these properties. Okay, which gives you ability to add more items and kind of format the, the tooltip to have more data if you need it. So for right now, I'm going to just grab this example that I threw in just so you can see what I'm talking about. So we're going to go back here. I'm just going to remove this and I'm going to paste this in. So yeah, I'm returning, this is an object, and then I have all of the properties that we we state here in that object, and I have some text, you know, before title, title, title. Let's just save that and see what we get here. It's not going to look pretty, but it is what it is. So. This gives you the ability to add multiple, have multiple lines and, and, and adjust things that you might want. So for example, um, let's say your data source has other items like uh, other fields that relate to this, but you're not displaying it. You want to show that. It could be an address, could be whatever. Um, to give you an idea. So here's 
one, and I'll walk through that in a second. So I'm using before title, I just put valence, the label, I'm just using the value, which is passed in. We still get the record so we can get other items from our data source, just like we're used to. So, you know, I'm getting this other column called sales two. Um, if it's multi-series, you'll have access to the series label and then the index. This is not multi-series, so there's, there is none. And then, you know, I added a uh, footer, I put CNX corporation. So just see what that looks like. So now I've got more information on that tool tip if I needed, um, because before it's just a string of a string, right? That you can't put HTML markup. So to accommodate that, we have this ability to add other items, but you just have to return it as an object and they have to be one or many of these property names, like so. Um, any questions? Sean, did I miss anything or you think I should go over anything else or? Uh, yeah, I don't, I, I, I can't think of, uh, I, I think you could went over everything with that. Okay. All right. So, yeah, if, I guess if there are no other uh, questions, that's all we got for today. I don't see any, I don't see any in the chat. So I'm assuming in the chat. Oh, okay. All right. Well, thanks everyone for joining and we'll have this up on the, uh, oh wait, a question just came in. How do you display the date format to, to month, day, year? All right. The question is how, how do you display the date format to be month, day, year? What's slashes? So I'm gonna go. Let me go back to here, and I'm gonna go to. Let me just bring this up. All right. So we have dashes. That one is. This is month, day, year, and then we go up to this gear, and then change it. You want to make the date separator a slash. Hit OK, and you see the slashes now instead of the dashes. Yep. OK. All right, well, thanks, everybody. Yeah, if anyone has any other questions, let us know. And of course, we'll have this up on our YouTube channel once we you know, uh, save the recording and push it up. And uh, look forward to seeing everybody in the next uh, Developer Diaries. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.